we're doing a new podcast now. This is the first episode. What, what's the name of this podcast? We haven't come up with it. We can call it Live with Ricky and Juan. We can call it Real Estate Mavericks. We can call it Killers. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome back to another show uh, live with Juan and Ricky. Uh, this is actually our first podcast uh, of our new little format here. So I got Juan Baradici up in New York, Long Island, Mars, wherever the hell he is. Uh, what up, dude? Doing good, man. You butchered my last name, by the way. What is it? Baranechi. Ba- Baranechi. That's gonna be an entire podcast. You're trying to pronounce my last name. No, I, I, I mean when when I talk to you, I'm like Juan Beredici, Alfredo, uh, <laughs> mozzarella meatballs. That's what I say. A little bit of everything, but I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm good, man. Did you? How was your lasagna? Lasagna was delicious, and my favorite type of lasagna is real estate lasagna. Real estate lasagna, shaped like a house. E- exactly that, man. I build it brick by brick, and. Uh, like I said, I'm a little real estate obsessed. So everything, all the food you eat, you you like put a foundation, <laughs> like you put the rice down and then, you, and then you just, you know, you build a good, uh, you know, pour the slab and I got you. I got you. That's it, man. Cool. Cool. Well, I'm excited about our new little format here and the future of uh, the direction that we're going in with all this stuff. So uh, yeah, just, just a quick little story background here. I was on Juan's podcast. When was that? Four years ago? Two, three. I think it was about three now. I think it was 2018. Yeah, 2018. Okay, so Juan had a little podcast. You don't even do that podcast anymore, huh? It, it completely died out. What ended up happening was uh, podcasts are all about consistency. And um, I had you, I had a couple of other big guests, but afterwards the business took over. So uh, no, I haven't been too consistent with it lately. Yeah. Well, you know, my podcast, I've been posting every single day. Every I remember when, when I messaged you off Instagram, it had to been 2017. And I think the one thing you told me you were doing was you were posting on Instagram and all your other platforms like every single day for four years previous. And at that point, you were at like 6,000 followers. So the fact that you're at 250K now on Instagram, and I don't even know how many you have on YouTube. And then we did our podcast and then you blew up right afterwards. It, it's kind of cool just to see the growth because you've done nothing different. You've just been consistent to the T. I think the biggest thing, man, to, to really look at when you look at the growth of it is that nothing has really went viral, right? Like I haven't had any viralness. I had one video on YouTube that like went to a hundred thousand views, like within a week. And that was the, just one. It was called real, uh, realtor.com predicts real estate market crash in 2020 or something like that. It was at the end of 2019. And um, I posted it, it went to a thousand views and then it was like 5,000 and then it was like 10,000. I was like, oh my God, cause I never get like over a couple thousand views a video. So that was pretty cool to see one actually take off. But uh, no, no, like I, it for me, it's just slow, steady growth, consistency over time. Gary V is a real big influence for a lot of the stuff I do. Like that's where the free coaching came from. That's where posting on all the different platforms and stuff came from. And uh, one thing I, I, I heard him say uh, on a post here recently, it, it was really cool to, to, to listen to this because it was like either your content is so fire that you can't be denied, like that it just takes off and goes viral and just goes crazy. Now everybody knows you or you're not like a celebrity or you don't have content that goes you know, viral and you just have this small group, this small audience, and you just keep building and building and building little by little by little, you know, over time. And that's literally what I've done. I mean, 50 something thousand subscribers on YouTube that <laughs> I'm literally, you know, I've never hit the hundred subscriber a day mark. It's just a slow, steady, you know, growth. I see, I see all these other YouTubers meet the meet Kevins and the Graham Steffens and stuff who, you know, we're hitting a million subscribers that started YouTube at the same time that I started YouTube, but it's completely different. Like they started with real estate and they transitioned to general stuff, personal finance, different things like that. So it's just a slow, steady growth, man. It's just a, it's just a grind. And I actually love it like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cause 
I feel like my 50 something thousand subscribers on YouTube is actually in a way worth just as much as other people's millions of subscribers. You know what I'm saying? I, th I think that's where a lot of people see the metrics and they're like, oh, wow, if I don't have 100, 200, 300,000 mm -hmm. followers, I'm not doing it big. But in reality, I'd rather have 20, 30,000 loyal followers that'll go to the movie yeah. back to me than a million. So I think you've built it the right way. And that's what we have to preach to build a loyal following that uh, believes in what you preach, you know? A hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, bro, let's bring out our guest today. Uh, Mr. Tyler Higgins. What's up, bro? What's up, man? How are you doing? Happy Good to be here man. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyler, pleasure to have you, man. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show, man. Yeah, tell everybody who you are, where you're at, how long you've been selling, all that good stuff. Yeah, so I'm Tyler Higgins. Um, I'm now with EXP, joined EXP early on in 2020. Uh, I live in central eastern Kentucky. So y'all are at the, got Ricky at the beach, got Juan up in New York, and then I'm in the hills of Kentucky. So uh, a couple different worlds here, but um, got a wife, Hannah, a little boy named Cole, been selling real estate since February of 2019, so I'm I'm pretty new to the business. Good nice. Stuff, Listen, as as a new agent, what were your first 30 days like? Like, what was the reality of it? Because we see all these agents getting their license. They're like, "Hey, what's this career like? What were the first 30 days like? like? Describe that to us." Yeah, so I was in a I was in an interesting position. I actually started as an inside sales agent uh, with a team before I was licensed for about 90 days. Uh, in those 90 days, kind of laid the foundation of the importance of lead gen and lead follow up, those kind of things for me. So then when I got my license, I was able to already had a pipeline going. So I was able to kind of take off running, already had some relationships, started doing some deals. It was a very transactional team, you know, so I had built a pretty decent amount of leads in that short time. So when I got my license, thankfully, I was able to start knocking out some transactions and some closings pretty quick. Yeah, nice, nice. Okay, so. So your first full year in real estate, what were your numbers? First full year was this past year. Did 31 deals for just over 7 million. Holy moly. Tyler, yeah, guess, guess how many deals I did my first year? What? Hit me with it. One. <laughs> <laughs> for yeah, Ricky, I think I've heard you say that before too, right? For a total of $200,000 in volume. So I, I think you could uh, go ahead and pat yourself on the back, man. You're having a phenomenal start to an incredible career. Thanks, man. Yeah, it was a blessing for sure. I was super excited about it. Yeah, I did four deals my first year. Let's see, what was the volume? It was like, a, it was like 250, 250, 250. Let's see, I probably, I probably didn't even do a million dollars, one million my first year, you know? That sounds like a pretty similar price point to me. I'm at uh, like 227 is my price point. So probably kind of similar to where you were when you first started out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It took me eight months to make my first sale. So like I, I talk to agents all the time and I talked to an agent today and he was like, I did 12 this yeah, last year was my first year and I did 12 deals. And uh, I was like, wow, man, that's incredible. And he was like, really like that? And I was like, oh my God, bro. I, I, I kind of went off on him. I was kind of, I was kind of pissed. Yeah. I was like, I was like, dude, <laughs> I, I did four deals my first year, you know, I said, and I was trying to talk to this guy about like his mindset, like he needs to change his entire, cause he's thinking so backwards about so many things. And this was one of them. And I was like, you know, you did 12 deals, you know, and then I say, that's amazing. And then you're like, really? Like, like that's a horrible number or something. I was like, dude, you were doing amazing. You know, Yo, I yeah, that's incredible. F bombs on him and stuff. And I was like, <clears throat> you're doing absolutely incredible stuff. You know, you, dude, you, I was like, you, you're, you're so people in their first year and tell me, like, I want to hear your first year, like the big picture of it, but like people in their first year to me, it's not even about transactions and stuff. It's about a couple of things. It's about learning everything you can learn about like how to write contracts, look at MLS, like all those skills are worth millions of dollars. And then like, to me, a new agent comes in and they're like, okay, I want to do 20 deals. Mm -hmm. they come in and they don't do anything. That's like two a month. They come in, they don't do anything for four or five months. And then they're like, Oh, I'm failing, you know, cause they're thinking two a month, they're going to do two a month, two a month, two a month. And it's like, what happens for a new agent is all your deals for that first year get lumped into the second half of that first year. 
Like a lot of these new agents, they don't do anything for six months and then boom, the, the good ones put in so much work during that first half of this, the year for nothing, but they knew, they knew where it was going. So they just kept pushing and then boom, they have, they do the 20 deals that they had a goal to do in the second half of the year. Everything is yeah. lumped into the second half of the year and your the amount of deals you close in the second half of the year completely depends on the amount of work you put in for free in the first half of the year. Um, and people are getting to four months and like my guy, William Patrick, right? He's nine months in, he closed five deals, has seven pending and 12 listings. He didn't get his first listing until he got to 14,000 calls. Wow. Right? 14,000 calls. Man. It's like if he would have quit at 10,000, at 13,900, at 13, if he would have quit, he wouldn't have got that first listing. And then now look at him. He has all kinds of momentum. He's closing deals. Like I tell people that story and new agents are like, oh my God, that's amazing. You know, wow, yeah, yeah, look yeah. at that. I'd love to be there. And I'm like, yeah, but listen, here's the other part of the story. It took him 14,000 calls to get to his first deal. So like, what did your first, like, what do you see big picture, like of your first year? Like, cause it's more than just transactions, right? It's what you yeah, learned. Yeah, yeah. It's the database that you built, you know, it's all the future business you created. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I've got a lot to say on that because where I'm at now compared to where, where I was first year, there's been a ton of transition and change just in who I am as an agent, you know, went from being on a team to being an individual agent, all sorts of stuff. So I, I figured out pretty early on that things I needed to learn how to do were to find business. And I needed to learn, like you said, the mechanics of a real estate transaction. Like people laugh at me when I tell them this. I got into real estate and I couldn't have told you the difference between a water heater and an HVAC. Like dead serious. Didn't grow up around real estate. Didn't grow up knowing anything about houses. Neither of my parents were in sales of any kind. I got in and was like, okay, I got to learn the mechanics of a real estate transaction. You know, how does this happen? And I got to learn how to find business. Um, and I'll tell you what helped me is I found you. I was on a very, very, very transactional, like minded team, not really relationships over transactions, obviously. So I was, I was fortunate to find you very early and you'll laugh at this, bro. So in my, at my desk on the wall, there's a sticky note that said, believe, work hard, adapt and be patient, which was your, that was your thing from the beginning was the BWAP. Uh, and then, so I was able to have that mindset of like, okay, I'm going to build as many relationships as possible right now, no matter what that means in a genuine way so that I can do deals later on. Um, and just trusting that process of, you know, trying to build relationships. Like you said, it always pans out in the end. That's where your deals come from is those long-term relationships. So I was able to, to find you and develop that mindset of trusting the process of building relationships pretty early on. And I'd say that really helped me, you know, kind of in my second, second half of the year, you know, during my first year. Yeah. So, but yeah. But like, well, <clears throat> let me ask him real quick, Juan, like your, like, like I want to know big picture stuff. Like how many calls did you make? How many people did you talk to? What did okay, you yeah. look like? Yeah. So like I said, I, uh, I started out uh, circle prospecting, FISBOs expired. Anybody I could really get into conversation with is how I started to build my database in the beginning. And since the beginning, I've been doing the weekly email, um, you know, through MailChimp or Constant Contact, whatever you want to use. Uh, so I've been in, like I said, I got licensed February 2019. I've got 540 people in my database now, uh, you know, a year and a half, two years later. Um, a ton of that in the beginning, and I actually wrote some notes on this, uh, cold calling and the weekly email is what kickstarted me, where I found some deals, where I started to network, build relationships. Um, really early on. And that kind of catapulted me in to building a brand and building a business to where I started to be able to get referrals. People in my sphere were noticing my brand. And I was getting business from that. Um, and that's kind of where my database is at now is I've got, I've got a really kind of solid VIP database of my sphere and people that are either going to work with me or refer me clients. But I've also got a database of 500 other people that may not be doing something for the next two, three, four months or years but they're still going to be getting the weekly email. So when that time comes, I'm their guy. So you have a really good follow-up system in place. You're nurturing your database. Why don't we give the audience a actionable, actionable steps they could take from, from this as far as like what they could do to kind of replicate your success <clears throat> first year? What's your day-to-day -day look like? What time do you wake up? What's your schedule like? How, how many hours do you spend on prospecting the phone, things like that? Tell us like exactly what you do. Yeah, so my mornings, um, typically I get up, 
you know, somewhere between seven and eight and I spend some time with my son. He's not even two yet. So, uh, you know, the day gets crazy once nine o'clock hits and then he goes to bed pretty early. So I like getting a little family time there in the morning. Uh, and then by eight 45 or so I'm in the office, you know, the tried and true, the morning time is when you're best for prospecting. That's when I get into my prospecting in the morning, usually for about two hours. So nine to 11, that's how I was taught early on is, you know, hour and a half, two hours of leads in a day, uh, guard that time. And that's been helpful for me. I'd say where I've transitioned is that used to be just cold calling um, and pouring people into my database. Now that's come uh, kind of transition to uh, social media and then really, really touching my VIP list in a high level. So uh, once a month um, in different forms of communication, anybody that I think would either work with me or refer somebody to me is getting a high level touch. So January, they'll get a hand, they'll get a letter that, you know, that's about why I work with referrals. February, they're going to get a phone call. Uh, March, they're going to get a text or a coffee or a client party. And I'm doing that kind of with my, my really, really strong database that I know has referred me business or will, will refer me business. Um, so after that, I'd say one thing that has really contributed to my business, uh, in a big way has been my follow-up. So I think that's where early on I, I made some big mistakes with follow-up in my first, my first year when I got licensed in 2019, I bet I lost out on, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 deals from my smaller database just because I didn't follow up well. You know, I didn't know how to, and I didn't know the importance of it. So after I do that lead gen, since that's the most important thing, the rest of the day is follow-up or meetings. Yeah, you know, you got to negotiate a contract here and there, put an offer together, show some houses, whatever. Um, but I'm constantly, constantly, constantly trying to follow up with people. That's a huge part of the second half of my day. Phenomenal, man. So you would say the first half is mostly consistent of prospecting, hitting the phones, nurturing your database. Second part of the day is following up with that database, making sure they're ready to meet with you or obviously go ahead and help buy or sell their, their property. Um, when do you do your appointments? Do you have a set time for them? Is it only evenings? Is it sometimes the weekends? When do you actually show houses? Tell me a little about that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'll kind of go whenever and fit the need to the client. You know, I, I feel like sometimes in our industry, it's super easy for agents to beat themselves up. Uh, and I know this is why Ricky put his three by three in place, you know, three days a week, three hours of prospecting. And they're like, well, you know, my client can only go see homes at 9 a.m. on Thursday. That's what I'm supposed to be doing lead gen. You know, and they get in this like paralysis by analysis guilt trip thing. Um, I'm pretty flexible. I typically try to go do that stuff after the lunchtime of the day. I feel like that's when most people are, are free to go see houses, uh, you know, free for listening appointments, whatever the case may be. But if a client calls me, it's like, hey, I want to go see this house. I have, you know, 9 a.m. available on Friday. I'm going to go do that. So I, I, I am structured with my time. Um, you know, some people are like, I got my day broken down to 15 minute increments. And that's great. That works really well for a lot of people. For me, that's just not how my brain functions well. Uh, so I've got some loose structure of, okay, this is the most important thing I need to do right now. But I know I've got some flexibility to go show houses, to go on a listing appointment, whatever the case may be. Nice, bro. Nice. Cool, man. Well, um, I mean, you're absolutely crushing it. So you know, I mean, <laughs> look, here's what I would say. Whatever you're doing, just keep doing that. You know, like one of those things, if it didn't broke, don't fix it kind of deal. What's yeah, your and something to, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, something to add on the prospecting, I think, that I've been excited about lately is, you know, you hear people all the time like, yeah, I get leads from social media. Uh, but what does that really mean? And how do you really do that? It's not, I kind of had this thought in my mind of like passive social media marketing versus active social media marketing. Um, so when I say social media marketing, I'm not doing paid Facebook, Instagram ads, anything like that. Uh, I am, I am constantly, constantly DMing and messaging people in my database or people that I want in my database on Facebook and Instagram. Like it's literally the same as picking up a phone and calling somebody and saying, Hey, how you doing? How's your family been doing? You know, I'm updating my list of people who might want to work with me in the future. Or if you have any real estate needs, like, can I get your contact info? I do that nonstop, man. And I've poured past two days. I've probably picked up, you know, seven, eight new people in my database just from DMing on Instagram and Facebook. So I think, you know, the old school method of 
only one thing works and only one way works has to go out the window. Like I've heard you say a million times, anything will work if you do it consistently. And that's been huge for me building my brand on Instagram, but following that up with aggressively trying to get into conversations and build relationships with people Mm -hmm. has been, has been the biggest source of my business. I tallied up all my deals this morning where they came from. And it's either been from social media, a referral from social media or my sphere. Um, Mm -hmm. So my sphere, everybody that knows me knows that I sell real estate, that I'm trustworthy, that I care about them. And then, you know, I'm constantly, constantly trying to get in conversations online um, with people. So I think I would just encourage new agents. Like if you, if you just feel like you absolutely cannot do cold calls, which I'm a proponent of cold calls. Like I said, that's what kickstarted my business. That was a catalyst, but get creative, just do something and do a lot of it and do it every day, very consistently. And I promise you'll get into relationships with people. Yeah, dude, I say it all the time. Um, there's a lot of videos where I'm saying, you know, yeah. uh, call people on Facebook, hit the little call yeah. button and call them there or message them or whatever and reach out to them and just see how they're doing. You know, just start mm-hmm. a conversation. I mean, why do you think that every video and stuff that I do, I'm talking about, I answer every Instagram DM, right? Yeah. I'm funneling everyone to Instagram to message me. Um, you know, that's the number one place to connect with me is Instagram. So what it does is it creates a huge pipeline of people who are just constantly messaging me. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, I spend a couple hours a day answering DMS on Instagram. I mean, that's where, I mean, that's where a lot of my business is, you know, just in the DMS of my Instagram. So yeah, man, direct messaging people on social medias and reaching out and uh, seeing what you can do to help them, get to know them, get their contact information. At the end of the day, here's what I say about it at the end of the day. Great. Collect data, right? Mm -hmm. Use social media to collect data. But at the end of the end of the day, if we aren't talking to people voice to voice in the real estate business, yeah, there's a lot of businesses you don't have to talk to people. E-commerce, you're selling supplements, yeah. you're selling whatever. You don't, they don't even see humans. They're just seeing products and buying products. But real estate's completely different. You have to talk to them. It's a different business model, right? And that's why real estate agents aren't going anywhere because you can't replace buying property with, you know, people are not just going to look at a property. You can't just hit the buy now button and buy a house. Okay, yeah. there's a huge process that has to go, has to happen here with the banks, with appraisals, with inspections, the foundations messed up. You can't see all any of that stuff online. Um, you have to go there. Sure, you can virtually show the property, but then you're going to have to go see it in person once you decide you like the house and make sure that it really is something that's going to be a good fit. So what does that tell us? There's got to be human to human contact. So as yeah. we're, as we're, you know, DMing hundreds and thousands of people, you know, to collect that data, to stay in touch with them. At the end of the day, we got to have a list somewhere too, where we're blowing through phone numbers to call people, um, yeah, yeah. you know, to, 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 to stir the pot, you know, we're stirring yeah. the pot, you know, whether it's, Hey, maybe it's a bunch of phone numbers that reached out and said they might want to do something soon on social media and you're just following up with them. Maybe it's cold calls. Maybe it's fear of influence. Maybe it's from an open house you did. I don't know where the numbers are coming from. Mm -hmm. We just need numbers to call. You know what I mean? Yeah, bro. That's how I feel. I feel like it's literally just about taking action and doing it consistently every day. Because if you do that, whether whether it's circle prospecting, whether it's social media, whether it's open houses, whatever, you are going to get data. You're going to get contact information. You're going to put people in your database. But then where, where most agents, I feel like, miss out is this person's like, oh, you know, we might buy in six months or something. The agent never talks to them again. Like mm-hmm. I am I am busting down people's phones, whether it's text, whether it's call, whether it's email or whatever, like the sauce is in the follow up, you know. So it's like I'm constantly, constantly, hey, just wanted to check in again. You know, it's been a month or whatever. Hope your family's doing well. You know, then next month, next month, next month. So, no, I agree. I think it's all about just taking that action getting that data and then following up with it. Because if you have data, but you never talk to them, it's pointless. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's not a magic button where somebody gives you their email and their phone number and they call you back in eight months. You're like, Hey, we're ready to do something now. That's just not how it works. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. Well, bro, like just seeing it from the inside of a newer agent in today's world, 
you know, and like hearing everything you had to say today, dropping all these nuggets uh, in terms of like mixing it up with like cold calling and social media and DMing people and having the right intentions and just taking action and doing it consistently. You know, hearing all that from a, you know, one year agent that is crushing it on the level that you're crushing it with 7 million in sales for your first year and stuff is just really, to me, just super inspiring. I mean, just to hear this kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, well, thank yeah. you, bro. I mean, it, it, man, I, I, I really do. I, you know, I'll attribute it to a huge, a huge factor of, uh, you know, how you helped me early on in the business about treating it as relationships over transactions. Like I got a call, I got a call yesterday uh, from somebody in my sphere said, Hey, this is so-and-so uh, my husband and I want to buy an investment property. And I called you because I know we can trust you. Like we just trust you. So we want to work with you. So I think, you know, early on, uh, just, just truly, truly, no matter what the case is doing, it, doing it for the relationship and not the deal. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm successful. Like, yeah. I know it sounds crazy to some people like the team I was on, my team leader that I had, I would be doing things, you know, that, that seemed to him were so silly and stupid and dumb. Mm -hmm. But in the back of my mind, I was trusting that in 12 months it was going to pay off. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't getting buyer reps on and I wasn't forcing people to do deals and tell them, Oh, you're dumb for renting. You need to buy a house. You know, this is the time to sell. I was like, listen, I care about you. I like you. You can trust me. I'm good at what I do. You know what I'm saying? And however I can help you, just let me know. And I feel like that that's paid off in dividends. Yeah. I think it's a long-term way of thinking because you're looking at this from a three, four, five year plan. So mm -hmm. I tell all of my agents at the end of the day, if someone's not interested in buying in six months, well, their cousin could be, their yeah. mother could be, their colleague could be. So all this data, it, it, it's gold. You nurture the data, even though you may not convert that lead specifically over the next couple of months, long-term, they're going to bring you more buyers, more sellers, more referrals. So the fact that you have this figured out year one, I, I'm scared for every other agent in your market by year three or <laughs> five when you start scaling this thing, man, because you're going to just take over. But here's well, the thing, though, bro. Oh, here's, bro. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, though, guys. You're, you're talking about long term, right, Juan? Like we're, we're you know, you're, you're 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 putting rice, you know, on the plate, and like yeah. you know, you're 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 you know, you're boiling the the big the big noodles and stuff. But what I'm telling you is, is you're about to eat that lasagna because Tyler did. Let me let me let me bring you back to the first of the show, bro. He did seven million dollars in sales in his first year, first full year. So all this talk about long term. See, this is the problem, right? This is the problem. People put, you know, putting people first and relationships over transactions mm -hmm. and all this, you know, language and, and philosophies into this box and say, okay, you're 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 look you're working on your long term business. And here Tyler is closing seven million dollars in sales in his first year. So I just want to make it clear that this isn't a long term play. OK, this is a short term play that mm -hmm. ends up being massive long term. Sure, it, it's a two part play. It's short mm -hmm. and long term at the same time. Right. And we, I just have to make that clear because you got a guy that just closed seven million dollars in sales. And sure, he's thinking long term and he's thinking about all the right things and helping people and creating the relationships and stuff. But at the end of the day, he's closing deals right now. Yeah. And I think, I, Ricky, that's a great point. I think the thing with it is I am doing the exact same thing as the deal chaser at the other office that's calling FISBOs and expired trying to high pressure convert them into sales, you know, or, or trying to, you know, trying to convert leads, you know, high pressure or whatever. I'm doing the same thing, but with different intention. So we're doing the same actions, but my script is, hey, what in the world can I do for you? How can I help you? And his script is, you need to work with me so I can get paid, like you say all the time. It's the same. It's the same, but it's different, right? Here's the thing. The, 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 the winners of the world and losers of the world are putting in the same amount of energy, right? Mm -hmm. Same amount of energy. But one of them wins big and the other one does it. It's because they have different objectives, different philosophies, and different actions that you're taking. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you're doing the same thing. You're talking to... The same amount, let's say you're talking to the same amount of people and everything, but the yeah. difference is you're, he's living on just the people who want to do deals today. Mm -hmm. And you're living on people who want to do deals today 
and people who want to do deals tomorrow. Yeah. That's the difference. You're, you're 10xing your business, right? Because you're going to get the same amount of deals as the high pressure guy. The only difference is he's not going to get future deals. You're going to get the same amount of deals he gets, but also all that future business of everybody you ran into that you had really good conversations with. Yeah, and it yeah, absolutely. What's that, Juan? That thing compounds because now you got $7 million closed. That's 31 more people that you're following up with the following year. I, yeah. I, what is it? The average uh, person forgets their real estate agent after two or three years. You're staying in touch with these people. You're compounding on more sales next year. You're following with your database. The entire thing, just a recipe for everything to just scale up on a huge level. So it's, you know, it's crazy you mentioned that because this, this past, I'd say probably month, maybe two months is when, I, when I'm starting to see referrals calling me out of the blue. Like this week, I've had two people call me, which early in my business, that never happened. You know what I mean? Uh, but I've had a couple of people in the past week call me saying, hey, we're ready to, you know, we're ready to do something now. Or, hey, so-and-so told me I need to work with you. Um, so I'm starting to see the hard work early on compound, like you said, yeah, uh, which makes me super excited. So now I got to leverage that, like you said, and scale it and build it bigger, which is a huge goal for 2021. Um, 100%. 100%. Yeah. So as we, as, we, as we come to a close and get out of here for the day, what's your 2021 goals? Yeah, I want to do 50 deals. Um, mm -hmm. So help 50 families, which would be, you know, I did 31, so 19 more than I did last year. Um, and I really, really, really want to build uh, my business with EXP. So I'd love to be an icon agent. You know, I'd love to hit that icon this year. That'd be a huge goal of mine. I did the math. Um, if I do 33 deals, I should hit icon, but I'd like to go above and beyond that and hit 50. Nice. Nice, bro. Well, you're well on your way, man. Thanks for coming on the show today. Really enjoyed it. I know everybody uh, got a lot of value out of this episode. Um, if somebody wants to follow you or hit you up in any kind of way, man, where, where can they find you? Yeah, I'd say Instagram is, is the best place. So it's at T Higgins Homes. That's my first name, Tyler T. H-I-G-G-I-N-S, H-O-M-E-S, at T Higgins Homes on Instagram. DM me, comment, whatever. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. You guys go follow Tyler Tyler on Instagram. That's at T Higgins Homes uh, on Instagram. You guys go hit him up there. Follow his journey. You know, first year seven million. Wow. You know what I mean. So you guys definitely need to follow up and uh, and see what he has in store for twenty twenty one and reach out for tips. I mean, the guy's an open book, as you guys can see. Appreciate y'all having me. Great job, man. Keep crushing it. Do your thing. And if you're listening. Take advantage of that, man. Reach out to the guy. Very friendly, very easy to connect with. And like I said, you're open to helping out other agents get to where you're at, right?